Uh, today we're going to see um, an example of a mechanical system in rotation, and the objective is going to be how do we, um, we actually generate the bone graph model of the system. What you see on the right hand side is a set of steps that I have outlined for this purpose, totally consistent with other systems of the same nature that we have. But if we use the systematic steps, I guarantee you that you are going to end up with a nice bone graph with no errors. So let's 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 do it. Okay, the very first thing that we have. It says to recognize the elements that are present in the system. So what I did, what I would like to do is perhaps go over here. Let's pick this red pen to show you this reference point. You have an element in here, which I would call it an SF with velocity equals to zero for the reference. Uh, my reference here also here will be an SF with velocity equals to zero. This obviously here, this is an I element over here. We have in this one right here an R element, and this uh, spring is a C element. This, of course, here has a torque, which would be, I would do this as an SC. This one is a R element, the resistive element. There's another C element like that. And then you have this is an I element in here. This is an R element in here. And this is a C element right there. Very good. Everybody uh, on the same page. We can see that it clearly represents the you know what we have in there. So I have written here the very first step. It says recognize the elements present in the system. We have done that. Two, use a one junction to represent the distinct velocities. Very good. I believe <coughs> that the reference point is also a distinct velocity with velocity zero. So I'm just going to put a one for the velocity equals to zero, the wall in there. And in here, this mass obviously it's going to have one velocity which would be in this case theta one dot as you can see here you know theta one dot this other one is going to be also the other one which would be theta two dot and i would do the same thing for the velocity equals to zero on this side very good fair enough in here, you see, we have done a step number two, which is to represent uh, with a one junction to do the, the distinct velocities. And um, so step number three, attach to the one junctions the elements that experience those velocities. All right. I would say, well, let me change colors here. I would say, this is a, okay, hold on for a second. Mm. This is going to be a um, source of flow. Let's just put it like this for now. Source of flow with, with velocity equals to zero. When we have it like this, you have the you have the, when you have it like that, the flow into the system, the current is, is suppressed. So we use, instead of the half arrow, we, we move it like this, we represent it like that. So in this case, this one, you will have the I element, which is going to have the um, j sub 1, I would say, the inertia over here. This one, which would go and represent uh, with another i element, j sub 2, the inertia of this one. 
um, on this side I would say an SF also with velocity equal to zero is like this and I would represent it also uh, like that with the velocity equal to zero. We are done with step number four. Uh, excuse me, number three. So we attach the element that experience those velocities. Step number four, we're going to use a zero junction to represent the velocity differences, or called relative velocities, you know, between the elements and represent them with one junction. So let's say this is the one that originates the motion because it has a torque. So I am going to use that as the originator and go from there. Uh, one thing I'm missing from here before I go on is the fact that this has an input uh, SE in the form of the torque. Yeah, I was neglecting that. So, so we start with the um, theta 2 dot. This is zero. And step number four is says use zero junctions for the velocity differences. Obviously, this element see the difference between the motion of this and this one. So if that's true, I am going to go over here and say 0. And then this will represent it, theta sub 2 dot minus the velocity uh, um, of the wall, I think, B, which is, you know, 0. So that's what the step number four says. These two elements see the difference between this and that. And so I would do it like this. And the difference here is that one junction is uh, theta 2 minus theta 1 dot. Theta 2 minus. Okay, so that's this one. And finally, this one is the one between this and the wall. So this two is going to be represented with a zero in a one junction over here that represents um, theta one dot minus velocity of the wall, you know, which is zero. Okay, very good. Almost there. One more step, attach the elements that experience those velocity differences, the relative velocity. But now, I think we are basically downhill. You know, we're just almost coasting to the end. Because in here, you see, it's very obvious that this see the difference between this and this. And, and because that difference is already expressed here with the one that we have, all we have to do is attach the C element with with the 1 over k in this case and we have this R element you know the R element would be this 2 which would be you know maybe v sub 1 and in here we also have two elements that see the difference like that this one like this this is a C element and this is an R element like that and there, you know, there's you know, this, and then we have this too. This is the C element, and this is the R element over here. I think there you go. So that's for this R and C element in here. You know, we could give it some names, perhaps. If you number this so that we don't get it all mixed up, we'll call it C sub 1 and R sub 1, and then C sub 2 and R sub 2, and C sub 3 and R, R sub 3. This would be the value R sub 3 over here, value of this C sub 3, value of this C sub 2, value of this R sub 2. 
this would be value of this uh, c sub 1 and then value of this b sub 1 and what I want to say is that if you enter this into the CAMG software <coughs> like this that you could do the simulation already you could um, not complete the causal marks here the computer will do it for you and you will do you will assign also the bone numbers so what we can do is as we have done in other systems let's put this into the QMG software and then assign the causal marks later so just to verify that we did our you know that is is all correct but i think uh, it will save you some time by entering the graph in the, in this fashion in, at this point so what i would do is um, let's go over here and so we will we can start over here maybe we need just a little bit more space to have the entire thing oh no ma no here i think there is good enough yeah and like that yeah so let's just go and go for the mg software and then we'll go and enter this into this um this is almost just right huh very good so i what i would do is I, you know, you can start anywhere, but I would just start with this zero here, you know, with this over here. Eh. Um, you can start it basically anywhere. And you can set up the elements first and the months later, it doesn't matter. Um, like this and then you have this uh, one see you don't have to enter it the way you created the graph on paper but you have to enter it the way it is assembled that's important yeah and then we have this one right here mm -hmm. so it goes on pretty quickly here we'll go this way and then we have an eye element in here like that we have an AC element also in here from here to here and then we have a zero here from here to here and then this one from here to here with a C over here and we have a still one in here and then the I you see what I mean as you progressively go along the computer is assigning the causal and marks for you and also numbering the bonds so this is the reason why I am saying that you don't have to do that by hand if you don't want to unless you have a, a some specific numbers that you want then it would have to enter it in such, such way that you can get all that in there <clears throat> and then you're gonna have the SF over here. Very good. See, so this is the the way we have this uh, in here. Although those SFs are a little different, we could just um, um, 
put the arrows in here the way we want it in there but and let me just uh, make that little correction just to just to be on the safe side okay so then this would be um, here right here and so we go in here see and then we will we can put we can put the other one in there you know this symbol but let's just for the moment we could keep keep it in there so I will see this um, okay so we have this in here just for verification purposes let's just try this this you have this flowing here that means uh, let's see I need to have a red pen um, how do we get ah, I have to go up here to ah, yeah, yeah. red pen and then I need to minimize it so that okay this will have to be like that and we we go into the one junk the eyes here integral form makes this like this Professor? and once once we have this in here we it makes this flowing here it makes this like that and then um, we have to go to the other eye over here like this makes this like this when you have it like this it forces this like that and sets the flow to this makes it like that and then you have this already like that makes it see we have this too it forces this like this and this forces this like that this causal marks that I have on the left hand side should absolutely coincide with the ones in the in the bone graph picture take a look at it and there that's how we verify that 